Our next question is from Dallas. Yeah, my name is Dallas. I'm currently living in Cape May, New Jersey, and I'm new to minimalism. Um, so I'm only in like the first hundred of your podcast. So I don't know if you touched on this, but I was wondering, Ryan said in one of the episodes um, during his packing party that the first things that he got back out of the boxes were his pacifiers. And I was wondering if you guys could elaborate on that and say how you got rid of the pacifiers. Thanks so much. Absolutely. In fact, you know what? Because Ryan and I did the packing party together, I saved those initial pacifiers that he unpacked. Now, Alabama, can you unveil the pacifiers? <laughs> yeah. No, I literally had a box of pacifiers. And uh, yeah, my favorite one's the dark blue one. <laughs> I like the beige one myself. I have never seen these before in my life. Oh, that is good. Here you go, you go. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> We're trying something new on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> if you just listen to the audio version, uh, we have a bowl of pacifiers here. Now, obviously, that is not what Dallas is asking. But Ryan, I thought this was interesting because when you did your packing party, which is highlighted in our last Netflix film, if you want the best representation of that, less is now. Just go to Netflix.com slash The Minimalist. You can watch that there. But what happened is you box up everything as if you were moving and your initial inclination was to begin to start unpacking some pacifiers, what you called pacifiers. Yeah. And these were sort of things that actually got in the way. Can you talk about some of those things that you, those pacifiers, after you unpack these actual pacifiers, what else did you unpack? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's just a great metaphor, and that's why it's so used all the time. It is something that is soothing a, a uncomfortable feeling. So as a pacifier with a baby, they have, uh, you know, this, this uncomfortable feeling. You put a passy in their mouth and ah, life is good. Well, my pacifier was uh, Coors Light. It was uh, DVD players. Oh my God, I'm so old. It was, uh, <laughs> it was uh, my TV, um, my, uh, you know, Xbox and anything else that I was using to try and um, just forget the day. So I'd come home from work and it was like, okay, how can I drop everything as soon as possible. And um, meditation didn't come to mind. I just, uh, you know. <laughs> How can I pacify right. myself? Exactly. So, and meditation's hard. That's not a pacifier, no, really. Right, yeah. Yeah, so no, I mean, it's, it is, that's exactly what I was talking about. Just all those things that I use to distract myself from the discomfort that I felt coming home from work. Wait, hold up. So I'm just digging into this for the first time. So you literally put a pacifier in your mouth during those moments when you thought about these things, or is this is it a symbol to represent that it's, you wanted it's to? A do? Meta, this pacifier is a metaphor. I've never owned a pacifier in my adult <laughs> life. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, 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 listen, listen. Be, be, because you know how some people use the swearing jar, yes. right? Yeah. Like, there are things you can do that, are, I, I like that, that feel embarrassing or unpleasant I like it. as a way, way to remind yourself of just how goofy this would be to do this. So I thought what you literally did was you put a pacifier in your mouth to make yourself realize what it looks like spiritually for you to medicate on those no, things. I, I, I think we should advance that as a strategy. I, now. I love that something. thought, dude. That's a great <laughs> thought, yeah. I mean, I think you were doing that metaphorically by saying by calling these things pacifiers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and that's the thing when we talk about, because these things are your security blanket in a way, right? Yeah. But it's never the security blanket that keeps the child secure. Mm. They might feel like it is. Mm. I know Ella, for the longest time, had this little, it was a security blanket. It was just tacky. It was in three different pieces. She would tie it together. I mean, it was like a napkin at this point, but she was holding on to it, right? Because she felt a sense of security with it. But of course, that never kept her secure. Yeah. The same way that these items didn't actually soothe you in the way that is fulfilling or uh, life affirming, life giving. In fact, they got in the way of living a meaningful life. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's so easy to just have those things. I mean, dude, we're all waking up. And we're like, okay, how can I just not feel bad today? Mm. Like, I mean, I, I can't tell you a morning I didn't wake up like that. And um, yeah, so we reach for the, the thing that is simplest to reach for and the thing that we've conditioned ourselves to use. So there's no judgment against the pacifier or no. a security blanket or six pack of Coors Light. Um, it's just, uh, you know, there might be... Um, there might be ways to pacify yourself or uh, eliminate um, the emotions and the things that you have going on that make you need the pacifier. I think it's okay to judge it for yourself, especially, sure. right? Like, hey, this core is light. It's my judgment. This isn't actually helping me. It's hurting me. Mm -hmm. 
Or this, uh, I brought out the internet modem and at home I realize I'm pacifying myself with social media, with Facebook or Instagram or whatever. DK, maybe we could talk about some of those pacifiers in our lives that we go to whenever we feel that sense of discomfort. I know for a lot of us, as soon as we get out of bed or maybe we're still in bed, there's the phone, start scrolling. Mm. Scrolling becomes a pacifier. I often say that scrolling is the new smoking. Smoking is another pacifier, almost literally at that point. I mean, what you're doing is harming yourself in order to get that momentary burst of of, uh, stimulation that you get from a cigarette. Or for other people, it can be alcohol. For someone else, it could be television. Mm. For someone else, it's 45 minutes of TikTok videos. What are some of these pacifiers that you've identified when talking to people all over the country. I don't know why he's attacking me like this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can just go within and say, hey, what have been your pacifiers? And I can think of fast food. Uh, I can think of talking, social activity. And if you're listening to any of these things, asking yourself, well, what's wrong with those things? Nothing. It's not that pacifiers are wrong. Pacifiers have a place. They're not wrong. They're not evil. It's just a pacifier is something that you use to eliminate pain rather than express passion. So it's why you do it. You can take something that's perfectly innocent. And if it's an expression of creativity and joy, then that's not a pacifier. That's passion. Right. But if you're relying on it to eliminate pain, to distract you from the work that you have to do to get well, then it becomes a pacifier. And so anything that makes you comfortable and makes the questions go away the questions that you need to answer in order to know who you are and how you want to show up in the world, that becomes your pacifier. So for me, it's all of those things. And I think what happens is sometimes we find something that appears virtuous to the rest of society. Yep. And now this is my good pacifier. Like, oh, the, the even alcohol is better than heroin, right? Sure. Because it's socially. Great point. <laughs> <laughs> oh my stars. <laughs> but it's socially acceptable to go out to a bar with friends, but that mm-hmm. can be pacification. Or going out with friends can be a really rewarding experience. I love one of the things that Ryan did as he started reshaping some of his relationships. We wrote about this in our last book, Love People Use Things. What happened was you said, hey, I'll still hang out with you. We're just not going to go to that bar anymore. Right. And a yeah. lot of those people, they cease to exist in your life now. Yeah, it was it was uh, incompatibility. Mm-hmm. And like, that's okay. I didn't judge them for it. They didn't judge me for it. It was just, okay, we're not doing the same things anymore. But yeah, if you want to avoid um, the pacifiers that are harmful, then you got to stop hanging out with people who are only going to hang out with you in those situations using those yeah. pacifiers. Venting, complaining Oof. is one of those sneaky pacifiers <sighs> because... It's not inherently wrong. And there is a context where complaining is a healthy thing and it's cathartic for, cathartic for you. But it also has kind of like this unquestioned status where surely if you're just blowing off some steam and talking about your bad day, you're getting better, right? But it's possible to get caught up in a cycle of complaining where you are using the, the verbal expression of blame, the verbal expression of resentment as a way to hide from your life and what you need to do to get well. Mm. And the question is, what are you hiding from? Like that is, if, if people are having a hard time with pacifiers, the question is like, what are you hiding from? And for me, I mean, I, was, I used to hide from so many things. And what I've realized like in the last, I don't know, three, six months, you know what I hide from most often? What's that? Being quiet with myself. Mm. And it's like, I'm just now starting to learn how to enjoy that quiet time with myself. Because even when we moved to Missoula and I started doing these experiments to like to be with my, like on my own, like I saw Josh going to movies by himself and out to dinner by himself. And I'm like, what a psychopath. <laughs> and then I'm like, wait, that's actually sounds like a pretty healthy thing, like to go out and be with yourself. So when I was with myself, I would still be in these um, stimulating environments So now I find myself like when I get quiet is when I start to reach for different pacifiers. I start to scroll or whatever it is. And uh, yeah, it's, I was telling Mariah the other day, I'm like, I'm realizing I hate it when I don't have anything to say. I don't know why that is, man, but it drives me crazy when I don't have anything to say. I would, did an added value a few weeks ago on the podcast for the show Messiah. Have you seen it yet? No. Came out in 2020. And for some reason I missed it. I watched it recently and it's about this 
messianic figure. It's like, is he Jesus? Is he uh, a new Messiah? Whatever. Is he a fraud? Like, we don't know as the show unfolds, and then maybe we do know by the end. But uh, throughout that, you never see him react. He's so calm, and he revels in the silence, but he's also okay with talking as well when it is required. When it adds more value than silence, he will talk. But otherwise, the silence is the place that he, you see him and he's like utterly comfortable. And that is a place that I aspire to be. And I certainly am, am not there a lot of the time. But it's the, one of my favorite quotes from Pascal is all of man's problems stem from his inability to sit alone quietly in an empty room. Yes. And that's when we bring out the pacifiers because I can't sit alone quietly in an empty room. I hope you enjoyed that highlight from the Minimalist Private Podcast. If you'd like another highlight, check out this video. If you'd like to watch the Minimal episode, check out this video. Or if you'd like to dive deep into full episodes of the Minimalist Private Podcast, head on over to Patreon. The link is in the description. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement free.